we should go to our resident quarterback, Marshall Ferguson. Let's do it. Let's get a redtag.ca aerial port on on how the QBs will fare in the GC. Let's start with the guy who's building out a goat-like legacy, at least goat in in that city, in that province, and that would be uh, Zach. What have you seen from him in the numbers? And given that, where does he stack up in terms of his all-time legacy if he's able to get this one done? Yeah, I mean, the starting four straight is an incredible thing to achieve. It, it Honestly, not expecting to see Montreal be in the Grey Cup, and then Montreal gets there, and it takes me back to, in 2019, watching Zach take the hit in the first drive of the season for Saskatchewan, Cody coming in, and it sets this whole series of events in motion, which leads, of course, to Zach going Saskatchewan to Toronto to Winnipeg, four straight Grey Cups, and Cody earning his place in the league in 2019 to the point where when he does become a free agent, somebody like Jason Moss, Danny Machocha in Montreal wants to go and get him. So, yeah, Zach, the legacy stuff, to me, is incredible because, you know, if he doesn't take that hit from Simone, who knows if he ends up in Winnipeg? Who knows if he ends up going to four straight Grey Cups as the starter at this point? So they've changed, but they've maintained their core, and Zach has been the central part of that because I've already been talking to people around the, the league and even just friends and family in the last couple of days and they're like well you know maybe Winnipeg will come out and they won't you know they won't uh, play to their level and all. I go listen they got Michael Shea sending the message and they got Zach Kalaros running the huddle you think they're not going to come out ready to play like it's you have so much confidence in that because you know what Zach brings to the table and that's why he's starting his fourth straight Grey Cup which is incredible Zach, he's a he's a finished product. I, I was talking to DB and I was talking about the fact that, yes, he is very complete and mature. What is he going to need to do this week to lead his team to victory? I actually find it really interesting, you know, that they're playing against Montreal. And the reason for that is as he is aged, Zach is increasingly guiding the football to just put it in the best possible spot. Like, that's that's what I found really interesting in that West Final was I started realizing more and more that you can literally see the ball coming out of his hand and just, he's not trying to place it into a spot with as much tempo as possible. And it's not that Zach doesn't have a strong arm. It's that he's placing it as delicately as he can and as softly as possible into the right spot for his receivers. What he's going to do in this game against Montreal is we've seen the mayhem that they created against the Argonauts in the East Final. You know he's going to be all over film and getting the ball out in his reads. The reality is I called Montreal Winnipeg on Canada Day weekend in Montreal. Winnipeg on a rainy night, because it was a lightning delay night, they ended up just deciding... Yeah, we're just going to beat you guys into submission. We are going to pound the football directly at you. So Zach is going to be, I think, really, really smart with the way that he's checking at the line of scrimmage. I think he's going to basically have to understand as much as possible about what Northorp is doing. And I remember talking to Zach going into that Canada Day weekend game, and he said, I love matching up against Northorp's defense because he challenges me as much as any defensive coordinator in the league to make sure that I am fully prepared and you're never going to be right all the time, but he knows that preparation is going to be the biggest part of this game going in because he truly has to manage this game at the line of scrimmage and get them in the right situations. Let's talk about the other QB in the matchup uh, before we let you go. And Cody Fajardo, when you dig in the numbers on him, what sticks out to you? Yeah, so a couple of numbers between these two guys, like the big-time throw percentage between these two guys. Calaro, 7.8% of his throws this season, according to Pro Football Focus, have been big-time throws. Uh, the passing grade, significantly higher for Calaro. He just grades out higher. He, he's a bit more of a polished passer than Cody is at this point. I think a big one in this that makes me pretty nervous if I am an Alouettes fan is the sacks taken on, on the season is that Fajardo had 55 in the regular season, Zach just 26. I think we all remember the 2019 Grey Cup where Willie Jefferson and Jackson Jeffcoat against the tackles of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Dane Evans couldn't take the snap and set his feet in the first quarter before he was already being hit. So Montreal has got to pass protect in order to get Cody into any kind of rhythm in this game. And then the air yards percentage. Like, Kalaros is throwing through the air, not looking for yards after the catch. He's throwing for his yardage 64.4% of the time. He is, uh, you know, throwing his his yards are coming up through the air, and on the other side, Fajardo, just forty seven percent of the time he's getting his yards through the air. There's a lot of yards after the catch for the Alouettes. What I love about this game is either way, we know on stage with the trophy is going to be one of those quarterbacks, and it's going to be in some way or another legacy defining. And either way, I know that 
whichever one is standing on stage, people in Saskatchewan are gonna be really upset and really sad. <laughs> I mean, like, remember, <laughs> lose, lose. Remember when? Remember when we had them? So we shall see who it is. But it'll be fun nonetheless. Thanks, Marsh, for giving us the QB perspective on the big game.